Greatest integer function, also in short called as GIF, is denoted by the symbol y equal to box of x. Now let us see what this does. First of all, inside this box, if you say integer number, then the answer is simply that integer. For example, a box of 5 will be simply 5. Box of 7, 7 is an integer, so box of 7 will be simply 7. Can you guess what will be box of 9? Yes, your answer is right. Since 9 is an integer, box of 9 is going to be 9. Now, inside this box, if we come across non-integer, then what happens? Then the answer would be immediate left integer. Immediate left integer. For example, if I have 3.8... Now inside we have got a non-integer. So how you think? 3.8 lies between 3 and 4. So answer will be immediate left side integer. So left side integer that is 3. Another example, let's say we have box of 5.2. Immediately we understand that 5.2 lies between 5 and 6. 5.2 is a non-integer which lies between 5 and 6. Box of 5.2 will be immediate left side integer and that is going to be 5. So greatest integer function first checks the input. If input is integer, the output is simply that integer. If input is non-integer like 3.8, so that non-integer lies between two integers. Any non-integer will lie between two integers. So output will be simply the immediate left integer. For example, 5.2 is a non-integer. It lies between 5 and 6. So box of 5.2 will be immediate left side integer that is 5. Let's take one negative uh, non-integer number, a box of minus 4.5. Now minus 4.5, if you understand, is lying between minus 4 and minus 5. Minus 4.5 is a non-integer which lies between minus 5 and minus 4. So box of minus 4.5 as per the rule will be immediate left integer and that is minus 5. Let's take another example minus 13.75. Now, minus 13.75 will be lying in between minus 13 and 14 somewhere here, right? It is a non-integer. So, box of non-integer will be immediate left-hand side integer and that is minus 14. So, if there is, if there is any number which lies between two integers i and i plus 1, then the box of that number will be the left hand side integer. This is very important thought I want you to hold on in your mind. If any number lies between two integers, two consecutive integers, i and i plus 1, then the box of that number will be the smaller integer, the immediate left integer. For example, if there is a number x which lies between let's say 2 and 3, Number x lies between two integers 2 and 3, two consecutive integers 2 and 3. In this case, if someone asks me what is box of x, I'll say the lesser one, immediately left one, that is 2. Let's say if I say x lies between two consecutive integers 5 and 6, then if someone tells me, someone asks me what is box of x, it will be the left hand side integer. Let's now try to understand the graph of y equal to box of x. Now here x will be the input which I am going to plot on the x-axis and corresponding to that box of x represented by y is my output which I am going to plot on y-axis. So let's say when the input is 0 between 0 and 1. So that means x values lies between 0 and 1. So I am talking about this part. When x value lies between 0 and 1 y which is box of x will be simply 0. Remember I told you hold that thought. 
if any number lies between two consecutive integers then box of that number will be the left hand side integer so if x lies between 0 and 1 then box of x will be the left hand side integer that is 0 that means from 0 just before 1 y will always be 0 so between this area between x equal to 0 to 1 this part y will always remain 0 so that will be the graph between 0 and 1 what happens at 1 when the input is 1 then y will be box of 1 which will be simply 1 so when the input is 1 output the y value will be 1 so y value will, will be shifting here at 1 let's move on further and focus between 1 and 2 if the input is between 1 and 2 the output y will be which is nothing but box of x will be 1 right if any number lies between two consecutive integers then the box of that number will be the left hand side integer so as long as the input is between 1 and 2 as long as the input x value is between 1 and 2 y will remain at 1 so this will remain at 1 like this but moment x becomes 2 y which is box of x will become box of 2 will become 2 that means this is going to jump here right at here there will be a hole similarly if x is between 2 and 3 the output box of x will remain between 2 and 3 and moment the input is 3 out will put will jump to point 3 and this procedure will continue and same way you can think do the calculation on your own on the left hand side also on the negative side also so the graph of this particular greatest integer function is like a step so that is why sometimes it is also referred as step function now when you look at this graph you can tell two things which is domain of the function and range of the function domain of the function means all possible values of x so here you can see from the graph on x-axis all possible values are allowed right entire real number is the domain while the range range if you see the values of y the y value is 0 1 2 3 4 on negative side it is minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and this goes on till minus infinity so it is going to be minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 and so on so those were little basics on greatest integer function in the next video we are going to solve problems using greatest integer function and that is going to be really awesome till then bye bye and take very good care of yourself